Manta, I've recently discovered that my students just don't seem to be very motivated in my classroom. What are you doing to try to get them motivated? Well, I feel like I'm putting so much time, effort, and energy into my lessons, but my students aren't really catching my excitement. It's getting exhausting. Why can't they just want to achieve on their own? I think that a lot of teachers feel the need to motivate students, but the real goal is to get students to motivate themselves. Today's podcast is all about Larry Ferlazzo's method of helping kids motivate themselves. According to an article in Education Week published April 6th of 2011, many teachers try to motivate students by giving out extrinsic rewards such as candy or grades that are not based on student understanding. The issue with this system is that students learn to expect extrinsic motivation rather than finding intrinsic motivation. In another article from Edutopia, published March 21st of 2015, Larry Ferlazzo outlines specific ways that teachers can influence students to help them motivate themselves. The first is allowing the students to develop their own autonomy over the learning process. This can be incredibly helpful to them. Autonomy provides a freedom of choice in a student's learning. One way that teachers can establish autonomy for students in the classroom is by allowing students to do problem-based learning. This involves students or groups of students to determine the solution to an issue on their own. An example that I like would be How would you organize school lunchtime more effectively? There is really no right or wrong answers to this question, but students still have to think of the problem objectively to create a solution. Teachers can also help establish autonomy in the classroom by asking students to develop ideas for assignments. This helps teachers find out what interests students and develop activities that are interesting to students. This may involve getting students to design activities that they feel will help them learn the content. My personal favorite method of establishing autonomy is having students share in the thinking process. This means that when a problem is presented, teachers allow a think time for students to talk about their ideas out loud without fear of judgment. Instead of the teacher presenting the students with the solution and asking the students to memorize it, this method allows for students to brainstorm and develop ideas and solutions on their own. Establishing autonomy can also be done by thinking routines. Instead of teachers trying to control student thinking process, teachers ask students to attempt solutions And then teachers go around asking questions such as, what is going on here in reference to the solution method? Based on that answer, the teacher would then ask, what makes you say so? This system makes sure that students can explain their thinking method and take responsibility for their own answers answers or solutions. This system also allows teachers to easily find deficits in student understanding. These are all just ways for students to feel that they are responsible for and in control of their own learning. Another way that teachers can influence students to help them motivate themselves is to emphasize students' competence. Recognizing student competence is an important way for teachers to encourage students to motivate themselves although there are some things that teachers need to avoid. When a student is doing well and the teachers want to recognize the student's competence, the teacher will often give abundant praise to the student. The issue is that sometimes students realize that they feel elevated due to the praise, but this elevation can easily go away if they get a question wrong. This causes students to remain silent for fear of getting more problems wrong. Instead, teachers need to build and improve student answers without using judgmental language. If teachers respond with words like and and what if, 
It shows each student that there is more to be learned from each problem. Students also need to feel that there is a relationship between the teacher and themselves, also, also called relatedness. Some ways that teachers can establish relatedness is by taking a genuine interest in students' lives. Just remember that sharing goes both ways. A great quote from the article is, lead with your ears, not with your mouth. If you have a lot of students and there isn't enough time to talk to all of them every day, act friendly in other ways. A smile can go a long way. Be flexible. As long as students are reaching the ultimate goal, it isn't really important how they got there. The article gives the example of allowing a student that has never written an essay before to write about something that he or she cares about and teaching them how to edit from there. Most importantly, don't give up. Students may feel hesitant to get to know you. You can and will get through to them. The final suggestion Larry has for helping students motivate themselves is teaching relevance. Making sure that students understand how the skills you are teaching will help in the future. This might include having students write about how they see themselves using information that you are teaching. So what happens when you apply this to your classroom? One, you end praising efforts. Two, you start building relationships. Three, you use cooperative learning. Four, students recognize advantages of doing well in school. And five, you create opportunities for students to help make decisions. This concludes our podcast of helping kids motivate themselves. Thank you for tuning in.